sepsis infection diseases in the central nervous system. I have no conflict of interest. As we saw from Dr. Guerrero's presentation, there is a significant diversity of access to medical equipment and radiologists and training in Peru. We are going to continue to look at the different variables that affect this topic. We have three main learning objectives that we are going to explore throughout this presentation. First, we are going to learn about some CMS infections illness in Peru in relation to the Peruvian healthcare system. Second, I am going to give you information about the accuracy of MRI signs in infectious diseases. And third, I'm going to show MRI images of CNS infections simulating other pathologies. Okay, so the first, time, uh, the first point we are looking at in relation to the Peruvian healthcare system is the radiologist. We have many great radiologists in Peru, of course, as you just have seen from Raul, and you are going to see in a few minutes from Jeremy. But the reality of our country is that we have a lack of experienced radiology throughout the country. This is due to socioeconomic barriers that have limited the physician from offering the best diagnostic method for the patients. Many of the radiologists live in the city center, and this and there is a lack of trained radiologists in isolated areas. And due to geographical limitations, it is difficult to provide quality healthcare access to these isolated areas. The next point I would like to focus on today is about determining the MRI signs in CNS infections with the available equipment in Peru. There is a diversity of equipment distribu distribution throughout Peru, however, the lack of standardized protocols in neuroimaging affects the final quality on the image. Advanced neuroimages can give us very detailed information about the radiological signs of CNS infection. But we have to deal with the reality that in many cases, not all, there is a lack of trained personnel to use this equipment. The third point I would like to touch on, to, is, on today is that some infectious diseases can simulate brain tumors and other pathology, as we can see here in this image that we are going to see in detail a little bit further. That is why we always have to consider differential radiological diagnosis, but sometimes it is difficult to distinguish these pathologies because we may not have a good quality image. That is why we have to use epidemiological information, like the geographical information, exposures, and clinical information. Also, the lab test supplies in the medical record can significantly aid in developing a more specific radiological diagnosis. I am going to begin talking about neurocysticercosis, which is the most frequent infection disease and the most important cause or seizure in the population. As you can see here in this map, the red lines indicate the endemic areas, all the Sierra, the High Yangle, and the north coast of Peru. The north shore being a hyper endemic area. Since 1987, the Cystic Sarcosis Working Group in Peru has performed a series of epi epidemiological studies to better understand the transmission of the Atenia solium in Tumbes, the northern coast of Peru. Cystic Sarcosis Working Group in Peru decided to undertake the task of demonstrating the feasibility of eliminating transmission of Cystic Sarcosis under the support of a seven-year control project funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Neurocysticercosis is diagnosed by imaging with CT and MRI, as we can see here in this image, the typical cystic appearance, and in the CT we can see the calcification of the end stage of the disease. And the diagnosis is confirmed by serology using the Western blood technique. The cysticercosis working group in Peru was one of the first research groups in the world to apply the immunoblot technique in the epidemiological study of cysticercosis. 
Now, I would like to, sh to show you this case of a 15-year-old Peruvian girl who lived in the Andes Mountains with a three-month history of headache, nausea, vomiting, and visual obscuration. She also presented with visual and auditory hallucination. We can see here multiple cystic lesions diffusely distributed in the, in the brain creating a Swiss cheese appearance. We can also see uh, the cystic lesions intraventricular and in the tongue. After the administration of contrast, we can see enhancement on, on one on ones of this lesion, and of course we can see the scolics within the cyst. There are a few cases of disseminated cystic cirrhosis reported in the world. This is a patient of 82-year-old male from the Sierra who suffered from sudden loss of consciousness with generalized tonic-clonic seizures. And again, we can see diffusely distributed the cysts with scolics inside, in the brain, in the orbit, intraventricular, and in the mus muscles. And there is also a hydrocephalus, and as you can see. This patient received the warming treatment. And here in the same patient, we can see multi-organ dissemination of the cystic circle, including the heart, the lung, the pancreas, and all the muscles, and you, as you can see here. This is a case of a, my own experience where we can see the racemos variety of neurocysticercosis. This was a 59-year-old female with seizures. We can see here multiple cystic lesions in the basal cistern and in the sylvian fissure. Some of them have brain enhancement and, of course, produce hydrocephalus. This is another example of racemose neurocysticercosis where we can see the cystis located in the basal cisterns. And this is one more case where we can see only one cyst that was located on the fourth ventricle and produce hydrocephalus. Now, moving on to a different pathology. I show you this FLIR axial, axial MRI where we can see a focal hyperintense lesion with surrounding edema that after the administration of contrast, we can see that there is enhancement in there. Without any clinical information, we do the probably diagnosis of, granulos, of a granulomatose lesion. This was a 65-year-old male truck driver with a history of high blood pressure and diabetes. He also presents a lesion, an enhancing lesion in the left uh, nasal cavity that goes also to the left orbit. The clinical examination reveal an indurate erythematose and elevate lesions located in the left pyramid, pyramidal uh, area of the nose. And the CT shows compromise of the edmoid sinus, the orbit, the soft tissue surrounding the nose, and we can see in this coronal image extension of the lesion to the left frontal lobe. He had a history of swimming in the stagnant water. Here we can see the skin biopsy that show granulomatose process with the presence of free-living ameba trophocyte. It was Balamutia mandrilis. The final diagnosis in, which, in this case was mucocutaneous amebiasis associated with granulomatose encephalitis. There have been approximately 177 cases of amoebic encephalitis reported in the world, and 55 of these have been described in Peru. Now, I want to present this report of six cases that were admitted uh, to the National Institute of Neoplastic Disease in Peru. They were admitted for clinical suspicions for mal of malignant brain tumors and one orbital nasal sarcoma. We can see here one of those cases where we see a focal enhancing mass with surrounding edema and a lot of mass effect in this eight-year-old boy from the North Coast with the antecedent of chronic otitis. 
He has a history of bathing in cylinders with standing water. And this is other case where we see 